Meet the F-47. This right here, this is supposed to be America's next generation answer to the future of warfare. They say it is faster, they say it's stealthier, it's packing AI, and according to the Pentagon, it will be the most lethal aircraft in the U.S. military arsenal. It's being designed uh, to work hand-in-hand -hand with drones in a fight for the skies while also keeping a pilot in this cockpit, we assume, here. Now, at this point, uh, all we have is these pictures here. This picture right here, this picture, which is concept art, so we don't really know what the back looks like yet. Maybe maybe it will look like this. We're not 100% sure, but President Trump says experimental versions have already been flying around for like five years, and the F-47 will take pole position among the F-22 Raptor, the F-35 program, while the Pentagon is saying that these are going to be cheaper to make, and then the president hopes that they're going to have them uh, in series production by 2029. Let's just dive into how big of a deal this might be with retired Army and Lieutenant Colonel Danny Davis. Danny, great to see you. Welcome back. Um, we see the nose there. We hear the rumors of the specs AI assistance, maybe like Mach 2 and also, I don't know, a button for eco mode, possibly outfitted with uh, energy-directed weapons, which kind of sounds like lasers to me. So what kind of war is this thing being built for? Well, you know, that, that's really the million-dollar question is here because it's not merely just about the platforms. It's also how they are used. And, and obviously, mm -hmm. if these things have been flying around for five years. That means they were developed quite a long time before that. And my concern is that... You know, the, the nature of warfare and air power, specifically in warfare, has changed dramatically, especially, you know, you go back to World War II, then to Korea, then to Vietnam. Air power was a really big issue, and it was just kind of more technology, but the same kind of fighting. The way things have gone in the Russia-Ukraine war shows that technology, and especially the use of drones and air defense and electronic warfare, has taken on a whole new range. And it has really changed how aircraft and fighters are used. And so the question is, which hadn't been answered yet, is will this aircraft be any different than the current modern generation fighters that are going on in Russia-Ukraine right now? Because it could be that these things are so expensive uh, and they can't get close to the actual front line because of the air defense advances have become so much better than the air defenses from the aircraft themselves. So uh, it, the, the jury is definitely out on this one. Yeah, there's air defenses, and then there's also drones. I mean, I hate to say it, but five years for production, like in this AI war that we're seeing, in, in these drone like uh, wars that we're seeing, uh, in five years, are human pilots going to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anything that's autonomous? That's a separate a big question because, look, I mean, you look right now. Russia has absolute dominance in the air right now. In the Air Force, the mm -hmm. number of uh, fourth and fifth gen fighters that they have, which dwarfs anything the Ukraine side has, uh, they have a lot more air defenses, which is why the Ukraine Air Force has been mostly grounded except for uh, small numbers here and there. And yet – their air defenses, the, as weak as they are on the Ukraine mm -hmm. side, has kept the Russian Air Force mainly 40 to 50 miles away from the front line because as good as they are, they still are very much vulnerable to anti-aircraft capability. So they're really launching long range. There hasn't, I think there's been a handful of actual dogfights going on so far. So that's not the big role of aircraft. And then you get the missiles on top of that on the, now the drones of all different kinds and the air war itself is, is evolving. And I think Think that in the future you're going to have even less of the manned aircraft that are going to be necessary up there or even useful. Yeah, and, and, and lastly, real fast, before we go, we've got some video of the, the China question, right? Uh, China has been developing some of their own versions here. Um, do you think that this is designed with China in mind? I can't imagine it would be anything besides this. You have the Chinese J-36, which is also apparently in the late stages. It's also been doing some uh, test flights even of late. Uh, the mm -hmm. Russia has, I think it's the uh, the MiG-41 program, but that's further down the road. So really China is the big pacing of uh, item here. But even that's going to be subject to the changing nature of air war. And the side that figures that out the best is going to have the best advantage regardless of what the technology is. We shall see. Always